So my name is Paul Gordon, and this is, I guess this is a special headlines you may have missed. If you watch any of my shows, uh, do his daily, Monday through Thursday, there's different co-hosts every day, and I do headlines you may have missed, Monday through fr Thursday, and I try to cover stories that give you, th go take you through a process of, of awareness, hope, and action. And awareness is that you come to realize what you're in. You're, you're in this coercive enterprise bubble. And most of the people, hopefully most of the people that are seeing my stuff to some degree are still within the coercive enterprise framework. But for those that are not, a lot of you, you're being overwhelmed with fear porn every day. You're seeing the doom and gloom crap that's flying everywhere. You're seeing libertarians bickering to death about Ron Paul or age of consent or the nap or whatever. And it just overwhelms you. And I mean, I know I, I, I get overwhelmed and it, sometimes it's dark. And, you know, when I first started doing I Say, it was actually State of Wake. And then people start talking about, are you woke? And everybody, whenever they use that phrase, are you woke? It was always, uh, do you see the world that I do the way that I do? That's what are you woke, man? And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing that. That doesn't differentiate exactly what it is that I want to do. So I changed from state of wake to I state. And I state is real simply, simple. It's uh, I state, state of I, a state of one. And I'm advocating for the creation of 7 billion states. I think that's pretty clear. And in the beginning, I state it really focused. I was just evangelizing liberty through the news. And after a few months of doing it, I kind of tightened what it is that I want I state to be. And that's where awareness, hope, and action came to be. This part right here, that I'm going to relate. This is a this is a article that I wrote a while ago, and I keep trying to recycle it. I think it's an important article, maybe only in my head, but I think it's important. And I I really think it's important to combat that fear porn. You know, uh, uh, when I when I do the Is Daily shows, the two minute warning that I play before the show comes on. I try to start that at 8.58. The show starts at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That that introduction, it starts off with Fear is the Mind Killer, which is from Dune. And and that and and I use uh FDR quote, uh, the only thing we have to fear is is fear itself. There's more to that FDR quote that's quite fascinating but it's really essentially fear it's it's okay to have fear totally fine with you experiencing fear fear is a useful emotion it can help you become more aware of your surroundings but if you are governed by fear if it takes possession of you then you actually become paralyzed and the thing that you're trying to avoid will probably just own you so so I'm trying to cover stories in I state that give people hope and not false hope. I, if, if, if I looked around and I thought, man, there's not a lot of thing to be hopeful about, I, I would be honest about that. But I actually think there's tons of stuff to be hopeful about. And if you get to hope, then the next thing you hopefully get to is action. And many of you, even quite a few of you that I know that listen to my shows, you take more action than I do, but, but not all of you do. So this part is the hope part, and it's called Meet Prometheus's 21st Century Fire Anonymity. So Prometheus was a Greek god who defied Zeus and paid a terrible eternal price for that betrayal. Prometheus, he, he, he dared believe that humanity should have the great secrets of the gods, represented, of course, in the iconic form of fire. Now, according to Greek legend, 
Zeus had taken away the secret of fire from humans. And Prometheus, well, he loved humanity, and he decided, I don't care what you say, Zeus. And he decided to defy the greatest god of them all, Zeus. You can replace Zeus, by the way, in this story with, 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 with the mythology of statism, by the way. And he restored the secret of fire to humanity. Now, he did so at a cost, of course. And for those of you that, that know the story well, hopefully you'll keep listening anyway, because hopefully I have a slightly different take on it. But what was his penalty? Prometheus was tied to a rock, naked, splayed in a way that allows eagles to swoop down and daily remove his liver, which, which grows back only to be devoured again the next day in a, in a, in a way, if you, if you really want to look at this, this is, this is almost like the process of voting here. You know, you're, you're, you, you vote, you have a new election, you got new people coming in, there's this freshness, and then, oh, guess what? Then the reality that the person you pick or the people that you, you picked or the same person, the same people that you replaced them with, they eat at your liver and they peck away and they peck away, and then after a while you've had enough and you vote in a new slate of people, and voila, you wake up the next day with a fresh new liver and everything's great and then gradually you go through the process again so so zeus he, he couldn't let this blatant rebuke of his authority over humanity stand though even zeus could not undo what Prime prometheus had done so sure prometheus he was punished he was punished hard uh he brought fire he brought light. Really, he brought knowledge to humanity. And he gave humanity a power. This is the key. He gave humanity a power to depend on themselves and not Zeus for light in the dark or for warm in the cold or for the heat that they need to cook their food. So all that Zeus could do was make a terrible example of Prometheus, one on visible display as a warning, not to humans, not to humans, but to the other gods who might dare challenge Zeus's authority and pass on more secrets to humans that, that would allow them to own themselves, to rely on their own authority, and not on the authority of Zeus. Does any of this sound unfamiliar to you? You guys, I, I'm not looking at the comments, so I don't know who may or may not be commenting if you're watching on the Facebook, on the Facebooks. So we've covered uh, a few stories recently here on iState, including the purported, purported, that is, suicide of an Alpha Bay admin and the gloating of authoritarian in chief Jeff Sessions. Man, whenever you whenever you hear that name, Jeff Sessions, okay, that's the awareness part of I State. Right there. Jeff Sessions. You, you voted for Donald Trump, Mr. Constitution, Mr. Liberty. So you said. But who did Donald Trump put in charge of of the law and order branch of government? Jeff freaking Sessions. Jeff Sessions, who has no problem whatsoever with uh, with ramping up the war on drugs, with arresting people who put who put stuff in their body that he doesn't think that they should put in their body. They're not harming anybody. Possibly they may be hurting themselves. I'll let you debate that, but that's that's who Donald put in there. Uh, you have a man who gleefully uh, advocates for and believes that you should have a stronger policy for civil asset forfeiture. That's where they take your stuff before any trial has happened. And then you have to prove that you're not guilty so you can try to get your stuff back. That's the guy that Donald Trump chose. That's, that's the vulture that's pecking away at your liver. So make no mistake about it. 
and I and I covered a, a, a story just last week. Again, connected to Jeff Sessions, related directly to this. Make no mis mistake about it. The greatest threat to the state is two things. I say one in this article, but it's really two things. The first is anonymity. The power to be able to interact with others outside of the purview of the coercive enterprise. That is a, wow, that is an incredibly powerful tool that the coercive enterprise knows is is, is a fundamental undoing of, of, of who and what it is. And then the second thing is self-reliance, self-sustainability, the ability to, to produce for yourself or for a free association to be able to produce for themselves outside of the network that the coercive enterprise controls. These, these two things, they've got to work really, really hard to, to undo. And on, on, on the anonymity front, uh, whether it comes to the form in the form of untraceable 3d printed guns, uh, or or cryptocurrency or or even the ability to simply communicate with one another in an encrypted networks such as mesh networks or uh, if and when we get at a practical level uh, quantum computing come online they must do whatever they can do to 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 crush that and the case in point is the political imprisonment of Ross Albrecht. Uh, he's serving not one, but two life sentences for daring to create a platform that allowed people, allegedly, by the way, let's say that, allegedly, for daring to allegedly create a platform that allowed people to exchange anonymously uh, placing their transactions outside, again, the purview of the ever-demanding, every-hungry state, or what I call the coercive enterprise. And remember, the coercive enterprise requires a coercive association to be able to forcefully sell its worthless products and services. So in a sense, Ulbricht is a tragic modern-day Prometheus who, metaphorically, is having his liver picked apart by eagles. The United States, I, I put that in quotes uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you don't see me, the United States of America. But unlike Prometheus, the technology he demonstrated cannot be contained actually like P prometheus never i'm sorry not unlike exactly like prometheus the secret of this fire cannot be taken back mr coercive enterprise goon it, it can't happen so while these recent events and the events that are sure to come and the the, the recent event where jeff sessions is is announcing his intention to to create more spooks to troll through the blockchain, especially target, targeting what he's calling the deep web or the dark web, which I'm calling the liberty web. Uh, despite that, despite the fact that these things may seem discouraging to many who champion for the emergence of of let's just say liberty, they are not, absolutely not a reflection of the omnipotence of the state, but rather they are a reflection of the absolute desperation of the state. So th what they know, now you, ha you have to understand these folks, I'm, I'm not going to say that the state has no power. I'm not going to say that they're complete dumb dumb heads, but they're not. They're not omnipotent. They're not omniscient. But they do have resources. They have gazillions of dollars of resources. They have study groups. They have 
They have the technology and the ability to figure out that no matter what they do with the way that evil with uh, the way that technology is evolving, their their time is done. They only have two ways to hope to hold on to that coercive association. The first way is just flat out fear. People have to be, a, be a, continue to believe that they have far more physical force power than they actually do. They have to believe that. And that, that's going to become harder and harder to believe as you start to see examples of of these the, the these regional misfits, you know, if you look at what's going on in Catalonia and Rahava and other places around the world, you look at these regional misfits that, at, to one degree or another, are 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 saying no more with this big, large scale crap. We're done with it. And then the large scale crap says, "Hey, well, well, we'll see about that." And then they're going to march right in and they're going to discover that technology such as it is today, that the balance of power is tilted heavily, heavily towards the defensive. The cost of coercive action, offensive coercive action, is much higher now than it has been in maybe a couple centuries. So they know this. They have to know this. So what they have to do is make bloody examples of, of people like Ross Ulbricht. They have to fill you with fear, but they have to know that that, that time is, even that in and of itself, that's, that's not going to continue forever. Like I said, you're going to start to see more and more examples of large-scale entities coming up against small-scale entities and, and getting their hat handed to them. So then they have to rely on something else. And this is... This is the part that's the scariest, and, and uh, it's probably the most difficult to overcome. And that is, they have another tool, and that tool is the, the myth of state itself as the necessary protector against the basic evils of humanity. But even that, will be harder and harder to pull off if you start to see more and more examples, and I believe you will. Rahava, pay, pay freaking attention to what's going on in Rahava. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. Rahava is essentially, it's a large-scale, stateless experiment. Uh, it's, uh, they call it a confederal democracy. And I've always said, you know, it's not a perfect example. But it's way further along than almost anything else out there. Certainly, well, it's way further along than anything that's anywhere approaching the scale that they're at. There's two million people that are engaged in this experiment. And if you can see more and more of these examples where you have uh, uh, a different, uh, a free association form of governance that actually can contain, quote, evil, I understand evil may be subjective. But if, if you can see that, then the power of that mythology begins to go away as well. They cannot, they absolutely cannot contain the rapid development of technologies that are, are every day allowing, if, if, if not total anonymity, near anonymity, technologies that raise the cost of the state in finding those who wish to not be found. I gotta take a brief break because my throat is drying out. And yes, I'm keeping this in the YouTube version. So if you're watching on you or listening on YouTube, I guess, you heard me take a sip. I don't care. So outside of a few isolated uh cases, they'll find a few, like Ross Ulbricht and the, the alphabet person. But but, but but they'll hardly be scratching the surface of an ever-increasing number of people who are opting to go off-grid, off-radar, to go deeper and deeper in places where government lights are less and less capable of penetrating. And as the state unavoidably grows, it's, it's going to require a heavy, heavier cost from its citizens. 
and it will make it more beneficial for more people to choose the path to the fire of Prometheus to draw ever closer towards anonymity from ghost gunning to near anonymous cryptocurrency to near anonymous ever, I, I say in this article, ever, ever deeper webs, but I wrote this article before I decided to change it to ever liberty webs, ever more liberty webs, because I'm not taking that, that deeper, darker. No, this isn't deeper. This isn't darker. This is liberty. There's nothing sinister about this. We are not the underground. You are. We are a reflection of, of, I, I will say we, we are much more a reflection of, of, the, of natural humanity in conditions in which power is not controlled by a monopoly. This is what you'll see. This is what you'll tend to see. You'll tend to see free associations as opposed to coercive associations. And you'll tend to see a lot more voluntary cooperation in, uh, in, in a community, a geographical region, whatever you want to, however you want to look at it, where there is this, this more distributed reality of power around you. So don't lose hope. Do not be discouraged. Do not be overwhelmed by fear porntopia. Do not be sucked in to all of the, I'm not going to call them useless. I, I don't know. Some of them may be useless. Some of them may seem useless, but they may actually lead to some amazing discoveries that we can't, we can't predict. So I don't want to say they're useless, but I'll say seeming don't get, don't get your whole life, your whole emotions, your whole energy wrapped up in what seems to be useless debates in the liberty communities such as they are. We, and I put that in quotes because I know some of you will be triggered by using a collectivist word like we, but we, the pursuers of liberty, are winning a war that ultimately... The state, the coercive enterprise, cannot win. The fire is burning. The secret is out. The Achilles heel is revealed. And its name is anonymity. And I'll end it there. And if you're watching on YouTube and you'd like to see more of my content, uh, Go to YouTube or go to Facebook and search for my me, Paul Gordon, and look for, I guess right now, a dude wearing a vest suit thingy. That'll be me. And friend request me. And uh, then you can see my stuff. Although my stuff is global, so you can see it. Even if you don't friend request me, you can just follow me. And uh, also, uh, our show is daily which is Monday through Thursday, is on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. That's where it goes live. So be sure to watch it there. And if you go to iState.tv, there are links to the shows. And I am working on getting the audio podcast for these shows as well. So I'll thank everybody who joined me here. If anybody did, I have no idea. Maybe nobody watched this. I don't know. But... Uh, I thank everyone who joined me here. If you're on Facebook, stick around. I'll see if I have comments and I'll respond to those. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for joining me and uh, you, you have yourself a great day.